what gets to me the most is the brutality. They beat her in the face so bad, they snapped my daughter's neck. They were driving around with her in the trunk of the car, and I pray to God that my daughter was already gone before they set her afire. In September of 2016, Amanda Lynn Benton was looking forward to the arrival of her next child in a few months. The 29-year-old already had four boys, aged three, five, nine, and 11, who were her world. She was five and a half months along and eagerly awaiting this new addition, along with her boyfriend, which happened to be a little girl. Amanda, known as Mandy, was very excited. Born February 20th, 1987, in Kentucky, Mandy's family eventually moved to the area of Detroit, Michigan. Along the way, Mandy developed an addiction to heroin. She struggled to break the cycle, but heroin is particularly difficult to break free from. She was searching for programs to help her and desperately trying to get her life back in order. She had been turned away from multiple rehabilitation programs due to cost or insurance not being accepted or approved. According to her family, she had finally found a program that accepted her insurance and was supposed to check in the day she went missing. She wanted to better her life for herself, but even more so for her children, who she lost custody of about a year prior. Sadly, she would never get the chance. Mandy was last seen Monday, September 26, 2016, heading out in her Dodge Neon vehicle around 3.30 a.m. toward southwest Detroit from her Melvindale home. Mandy would normally go and get what she needed, then come back home. After not returning, the family, who knew the general location where Mandy would go, went searching in the area of Pitt and Norman Street in southwest Detroit, a neighborhood known for drugs. Around 10 p.m. Monday, her car was found, locked and ransacked. A homeless man found her purse in an alley a few blocks away, but her wallet, ID, and cell phone were still missing. A missing persons report was filed. Two days after that, on September 30th, Amanda's body was found in an abandoned house on the 8,000 block of Vanderbilt Street in Detroit. She had been badly beaten and set on fire. Through investigation, police were able to find two suspects, 23-year-old Jacob Barnes of Lincoln Park and Jeremy Lee, 16, of Detroit. According to court records, this is what occurred in the early morning hours of September 26th from statements made by both defendants two witnesses to the murder, and a third person that Jeremy Lee spoke about the crime with. According to the two witnesses, Juan Torres and Hector Garcia, they, Lee, and Barnes were hanging out together. Barnes called and invited Mandy to join them. Cell phone records confirmed that there had been multiple interactions in the early morning hours on the 26th. As the group began walking to a nearby gas station, Barnes stated that Mandy owed him $200 for a drug purchase and that she was gonna pay somehow. On return from the gas station, Barnes told the group to walk slow. He then ran towards Mandy's vehicle that was parked near the intersection of Woodmere and Cabot Streets and got inside. According to witnesses, the vehicle rocked back and forth for several minutes. Jeremy Lee went to see what was happening. He came back to Torres and Garcia and said he thought Barnes had killed Mandy. Barnes then grabbed Mandy by the neck out of the car and threw her on the ground, where he began stomping on her. The third witness, who was relayed the story from Lee himself, said that Lee bragged that he and Barnes stomped on her, snapped her neck, and carjacked the vehicle. After killing Mandy and stealing her phone, the two threw her body in the trunk of her car. Since neither wanted to clean up the mess, they bought some gasoline and drove to an abandoned house in Detroit's Delray neighborhood. 
They brought her inside. Barnes poured the gasoline all over her and then set her body on fire in an effort to destroy any evidence. They later abandoned the vehicle. Barnes later told his cellmate, who testified against him, that he had been plotting Mandy's murder since she stole drugs from him. But they would have never been caught if Lee hadn't gone around bragging about what he did. They were arrested September 30th. Both defendants were charged with felony murder, first-degree murder, assault of a pregnant individual causing death of a fetus, and mutilation of a dead body. Barnes was on probation at the time of the murder for a brutal assault of a different woman that left the victim with swollen eyes and missing teeth. During the trial, emotions were raw and tensions high. A fight erupted outside the courthouse between Mandy's uncle and a family member of Jeremy Lee's. Despite Mandy's mom pleading not to fight, several were handcuffed. Jacob Barnes was convicted by a jury on June 1, 2017, after a trial that lasted seven days, during which he often appeared bored and emotionless, except smirking towards Mandy's family. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. A jury found him guilty of first-degree murder, mutilation of a dead body, and grossly negligent act causing miscarriage or stillbirth. Jeremy Lee, who had only met Barnes one month prior to the murder, pled guilty in order to receive a reduced sentence. Though 16 at the time of the crime, he was charged as an adult and sentenced to 25 to 60 years in prison. Mandy's family held a vigil for their loved ones and hoped to encourage the community to come together and help each other out. The family decided to name the unborn baby Angel. Thank you for watching Justice Calls. Are you listening?